There she is, ready and willing to talk to an ex-husband. Yes. Yeah, it's Ronnie Bennett. How are you, Ronnie? I'm good. How are you? I am. I've got a cold. See, I've got my tissues here. So if I blow my nose every now and then, folks, please excuse me. I don't wish to be rude. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So how are you? I'm good. What about you besides uh, the cold? Well, you know, colds when you get them are everything. Right? <laughs> When you don't have them, they're nothing. But here's how I... I don't understand how I have a cold. I don't go out. I don't meet people. So I don't shake hands. I don't get... Cl so how did I get it? It's in the air, darling. I don't... I don't I've uh, been led to believe that's not true, that it's in the air. Well, I'm not going to argue science with you. I have no idea. People get colds. What's the big deal? They say you get it most from if touching. If you're healthy and you take care of yourself, you'll be fine. When people shake hands, they catch it from shaking hands because they might shake hands with somebody who has it. You know, you're not a doctor. No, I've read this. <laughs> I've read this. I've read all kinds of things that are bullshit, you know? And then I take, I take a thing called coldies. Have you ever heard of coldies? No. Coldies is zinc. And zinc, supposedly, if you yeah, start... Yeah, right. Well, you, we'll look that up in a few different places and get oh, that many different oh, answers. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, wait a minute. Look it up. You'll see. Zinc prevents... prevents. Alex, and everybody who thinks there's a cure for something there isn't... If there were, we'd know about it. Yeah, well, we uh, the old line is we still have, with all the science, no cure for the common cold, right? No. Yeah. I just, I think the thing about being our age is that I haven't had a cold now in several years, but then I do have a few other problems. But, <laughs> Evil, yeah. Um, but I haven't had one in several years. But what I found was when I did get one yeah. uh, in the last, let's say, 15, 20 years, it's almost as bad as having the flu. It's so much harder than when I was. When I was a little kid and you had a running nose, your mom just handed you some Kleenex and sent you out the door to go play or wherever you were going. Right. And, it, and I don't remember feeling much about it, except it was irritating to have your nose run all the time. But, um, but they seem to hit so much harder when you're old. Oh. They just feel worse. Well, I don't know. I just always never liked colds. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody? <laughs> huh? No, I just never like colds. I mean, they they it, 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 as opposed to anything else. I would rather get the flu, okay, than a cold. But at least a flu, I'm laid up in bed, my bones ache, blah, 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 blah. With a cold. <laughs> I remember once with the flu, having my big toe. You know how your, your mind, you're just so out of it. Yeah. But I remember my big toe being the worst pain I had ever felt in my life. <laughs> Just that one big toe. Really, the one big toe. So, it, well, I mean, it, is it your experience talking to older people and dealing with older people that they do get colds more often or less know. often or the severity That's is worse? That's something I ever thought about. Yeah, yeah. Um, my wife, she gets a cold and it sticks around for, she says, 10 days. <clears throat> And it seems to be I that way. Mine. I don't know anything about them except they sometimes hit yeah. me and you blow your nose a lot and it goes away. I'm pretty good with a three day cold. One day, getting it. Second day, sneezing Alex, it. Third please. day, starts clearing up. What? what? Can't talk about colds? What's to say? I know you've got cancer. It's much more serious I wasn't than a cold. Even thinking about that. Just, <laughs> come on. Come on. You know. But anyway. Um, so. I've got a, I've got a note here. Or yesterday, I I published a, a blog post mm -hmm. about you know since uh, Bernie Sanders had a heart attack last yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's been an uptick on you know everywhere of news people and opinion people and pundits going back and forth on should there be a an age limit for running for president. Mm -hmm. And so I left it up to my readers yesterday. One, the first thing I was surprised at how many people mentioned what well, we could give various psychological tests. I have, we'll cut, we can come back to that. I was really surprised at that. Yeah. And then, I mean, given who my readers are, I, I didn't count up any numbers, but I think most of them felt, no, you don't want any tests, and others thought it was really important to have tests. So I'm wondering about you. Uh, I'll, I, 
I, I don't know about tests exactly. I do think that Bernie. I know, but, well, I'm sorry, I put that wrong. I got. I meant, should there be a cutoff age? Yes. And I, I'll tell you why. Um, I I think. Don't if, say that as if you're the expert. That's your opinion, okay? <laughs> no, I am the expert. Uh, no. Um, everybody, when they have an opinion, thinks they're the expert. Okay, <laughs> so you yeah. uh, know. I just. For some reason, with uh, with Bernie Sanders as an example, uh, I feel that he is uh, at seventy eight. If you figure he's going to run when he's seventy nine, if he if he were the nominee, and then he's going to become president, maybe when he's eighty. No, 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 no. Why are you two years ahead? Next year we get a new president. We get a new president, but we don't know. What, is he seventy eight now? When's his birthday? It yeah. doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, come on. Let me put it this you're, you're way. You're, you're quibbling Okay, over let's say next year he's 79, okay? Yeah. That means that we've got, at the end of his term, we're going to have an 83-year-old president. Do you feel comfortable with that? Even, I mean, you know you're aging. I'm aging. I don't think at 83 I would be capable of running. Oh, I'm not capable of that running That doesn't mean other people now. aren't. I think it's good for violinists. I think it's good for orchestra conductors, age. It's not but about that. It's about how we age. There are people in their 50s who are already decrepit. And there are people in their 90s who are way ahead of the rest of us. And and it's you, you can't say everybody's 65 older. You can't think of or treat them or do anything with them that is the same. Okay, but 60 to 70 or 75 is one age group. 75 to 80 or so is another, and so on. And some people do incredibly well in old age, and others don't. So you can't, I mean, I doubt anybody would be running for president who's who wasn't aging well because they wouldn't be able to stand the campaign. Um, do you think Bernie but, Sanders is aging well? Yeah. I'm not yeah. much interested in him, so I don't pay close attention. Yeah, how about how about Joe Biden? Um, Joe Biden. Um, <clears throat> I think that he's been through a lot, but mostly I don't buy his his lack of politics well, more than anything. Well, I mean, uh, but that's it's not the about question. his age that I would vote yes or no. It's about how much I think he could yeah, but we're could or wants to accomplish that's in line with what I think needs to happen in the country. We're talking about it aging, though. You, you were saying that certain people, uh, when they age, uh, don't uh, are much more alert and aware and everything mm -hmm. like that. And I'm asking you, do you think that applies to Joe Biden? Do you think that applies know. to Bernie I don't, Sanders? I, I don't know him. I've only seen him in oh, videos. I watch him, and I think he, he, I would not want him running the country. I, I just, you know. Why? Tell me what he has done that makes you question He doesn't his seem like he has the, um, uh, you know, the job is very taxing. And that's why I think. Is I, it? Uh, Do you know that? The, pre the job of president? I think it's very and taxing. Somebody somewhere said yesterday, I don't remember where I saw or heard this, was, you know, the thing about the president is you have staff. You have staff, but still, you have to make the ultimate decision. Yes. You know, and they're coming at you at a rapid fire every single day. There's a certain uh, stamina that one needs to be president of the United States. Would you agree with me on that? Yes, but not solely. I mean, who would you rather have as president? Joe Biden or Barack Obama, not because of politics, but because of the ability to do the job? Well, that would be hard because I really don't want either one of them. I, uh, you know, his fault or not, Obama couldn't get much accomplished, didn't know how, or was thwarted at every turn. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I don't know that that wouldn't still be true. So I'm not any more interested in him than I am in Joe Biden. But if you were to talk about uh, a, a prime age for somebody becoming president, where would you place that age? I would I place it somewhere. Prime I, age. I, I, I would like them to have enough experience. The people who were pushing for, someone, either her or someone like OAC, is she needs another decade oh. at least of seasoning in, in, in politics and government. Yeah. She said this is only her first real government job. So I don't know that she knows her way around 
way around the system. Well, no, I, I agree with you. I mean, I felt that when Obama was I running... I think 35 is yeah. about right for... You, you have to be that old to run for president, well, to be president. When Obama ran, my complaint against him was that he had been a senator for only two years. And so what did he know about running the government? Now, I if you're a governor and you run for president, you have more experience at that kind of job than you it's would... a very different kind of government at the state level. Than very few did. senators ever get elected president. I mean, if you think about it, it's been governors, you know. Um, but, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about age. Yeah, yeah but I'm, what I'm saying is... I think that uh, a good golden age for being president would be perhaps 50 to 60, somewhere in there, and for well, stamina and in for what, experience. What I'm interested in, what you're saying and how the little side trips you take and what people were saying on the blog yesterday mm -hmm. is whether whatever... Uh, nuance or detail they gave to it, as many people as did wanted to control who could run for president. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised at that. Um, Why? Were people saying that there should be qualifications there? Yeah, that, that whatever qualifications they thought related to age there should be or what we should do to pass you after a certain age and say, okay, you can run. Mm -hmm. I was surprised at how many people thought there, whatever they chose, that there should be limitations on who can run for president. Um, and, and I was just surprised in a democracy that there were as many as there were. Yeah. And, um, and, and I was surprised, more surprised. I have... You know, my arguments for why I think 35 to be able to be president is a perfectly good idea. I don't think we're really mature until about then. Yeah. Um, plus, it gives you some more information gathering time and right. learning. Right, right. But, uh, but I was surprised if you were going to control anything. I, I really thought in a democracy more people, even not young, mm -hmm. would want to do away with the lower age limit. Um, and nobody brought that up, um, which is good. But, but still, I, it's the placing of limitations that I was interested in, and you too. Mm -hmm. And and who is going to judge? How are you going to? How will you either pick the age at which you say no, you're too old to run for president, or what would you do to, uh, what test them or something? Yeah. Let me bring this up, okay? I think this is an important point, however. A younger person brings to the table newer ideas, newer ways of... Oh, we're of talking old people. Oh, wait a minute. Let me finish with what I'm saying. It, it brings to the table new ideas. Many times uh, they will sit old there... Old people don't? Well, well, let me finish. Let me finish. They will, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. That's terribly I think, important to make I, that assumption I think, that old people don't have ideas. No. New I. And yes. they don't, ha they don't, don't have I don't. I don't think so. I think that older people have a tendency to work on what I call previous tapes, okay? In other words, hey, I did this back in uh, 19 blah, 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 and it should work You're now. You're an ageist. Yes. Ageist. No, I'm not. I'm a practical. <laughs> I'm a, Okay, I'm a practical ageist, all no, right? and when we're done here, I will spend some amount of time today tracking down the papers that have been written by people far more qualified than you that I've forgotten the numbers, but that, for instance, brand new companies and kinds of companies, more are started by people older than younger. Okay, let me ask you a question. And there are others like that. There are other studies like that. Are you set in your ways? I don't think of it. That's, that's something that I, I've been meaning to write about because I have been drinking every morning the mm -hmm. same coffee <laughs> in the same place for 40, count them, at least 40 years. Yeah, mm hmm and no, you can't. When I'm away from home, I'll drink whatever coffee is in front of me. But I like this coffee. It took me a year to find the blend I like. Mm -hmm. And I'll be damned if I'll go through that again. I don't think that's set in my ways. I think that's good for me 
having found something quite young that I really like and my taste hasn't changed over the years, if it had, I would be trying out other coffees. Um, if somebody, if somebody came to you and ways. said, Ronnie, I've got a great new coffee for you. Why don't you just try it? Would you try it? Sure. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, but I think... I, I, I know I can tell you right now, after 40 years, I've done that enough times, I'm not probably going to be interested. But I'm um, sure, I, especially if I'm away from home, I don't care whatever coffee you can put in front of me. Um, but I don't see... I see an awful lot of things of set. If you're, if you're our age and you won't get a mobile phone, um, I think you're going to, if for no other, there are practical reasons, you'd better start doing that now because there's going to be no other way to do certain things from now on. Like call people. <laughs> <clears throat> well, nobody, young people don't call anyway, but um, I think that throughout our lives, like my coffee example, mm -hmm is that you find something you really like and it's available, why wouldn't you have something every day that you really like as opposed to some random thing you don't know what you're going to taste in the morning? And if you like your bed made a certain way and if you don't like to eat eggplant, it's the one thing I do not I eat. hate, I no, like me too. It, yeah. um, and you can't get me to try it. I think that it smells awful when it's cooking, let alone taste. Why does anybody uh, like eggplant? That's what I don't understand. Well, that we're not discussing that, Alex. How did you ever get through a radio career? Um, <laughs> barely, <and> barely. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and those are not set in my ways. Those, as we go through life, we find things we like, and it simplifies life to settle down on one of them. Okay, but this now we're talking about somebody running the government, and it isn't about what coffee you're going to drink this morning. It's about decisions that have to be made. And are you making those decisions thinking out of the box, or are you thinking of those solutions? Oh, if, if, if from, anybody ever uses out of the box in front of me again, please, just stop it. Don't Cliches just don't work here. But, uh, no, it's right, not a, I, it's I, not I, a so cliche. It's everybody not, after, I don't know which age you've chosen, Everybody after a certain age cannot decide to kill all the Kurds in Syria. Okay. All right. But the, is that what you're saying? No. The point that I'm making is is that a older person is going to make decisions based a lot on previous experience. I would upon, hope so. No. Then, God, I would hope so. Wait a minute. Then upon newer solutions, which they have come for out of the box because they weren't restricted by saying, well, this worked then, I guess it'll work now. They're is, that, saying, is, is that how you think? Uh, I was very proud that at the age of, I think, 74, I came up with a concept called the Citizen Panel, which was to put like as many people as I could on, on the screen at one time, all talking with each other. I considered that pretty much a new way of doing a talk show. Uh, I'm sure glad I was. How many people? I I have gotten up to about I uh, I don't like to go over twelve people. Too many for me. Well, I, I, they often when they, they, they keep booking six people for a panel on MSNBC, and every person gets to say one sentence. Oh, but this is a group discussion. This is just a group discussion. Okay, but anyway, th that's not the point. The fact that I came up with that at like seventy four, I was happy about. I don't think I could come up with a new idea again. I think that's my last big new idea. And I've had a lot of new ideas in my life. I mean, you may dispute this, but I, I, I was the first podcast uh, years ago. I invented the whole podcast thing about downloading it to your machine and listening to it later yeah, yeah, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, but that was easy to do then because any, I could come up with new ideas constantly. I don't think I can come up with new ideas now. I'm the same age as Bernie Sanders, okay? Or maybe he, he, I'm 79, he's 78. I don't come up with new ideas. You know what? One of the things that old people do is what you just did. What? You know how a little kid, when you see a little kid only about this tall, and she can just say, hi, Mary, how old are you? And she says, I'm three and a half. Yeah. Well, you just did the damn same thing. Old people do that when they get after a certain age. Of, I'm se I'm 79, and, you know, that's a year older than Bernie. Well, well I don't know. It's just like being a little kid well, again. No, 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 it's not like being a little kids. Kids will 
tell you how old they are to the month, you know, because they're looking forward. They're looking forward to getting older. Okay, because when they become five, ah, things are going to be better than when they're four and a half. With people who are our age, we don't say we're 80 years old till our 80th birthday. I don't say I'm 79 and three quarters. Oh, I do, just because by this time, you know, by two or three months before my birthday, it's uh, just whatever you're closer to. Seems well, easy. Bernie, the other day when they asked him how old he was, he said, I'm this many. Anyway, uh, let me ask you this question, Okay. Uh, now we have Bernie. There's a different nuance to Bernie's career. He's had a heart attack. Okay, you feel comfortable with that? Mm-hmm. Really? You 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 want? I have a friend who uh, had a heart attack and big deal heart surgery twelve or fifteen years ago. And he's going strong. Okay, but you're not. Your friend is uh, a friend. If he's your president and he's in charge of the country, do you want somebody with a heart condition? What do you think vice presidents are for? Well, in the case of Pence, to annoy us. Uh, but, you know. No, you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. it, it, don't always go for the joke, Alex. Just. <clears throat> I'm not going, I'm not going for the joke. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, he annoys the crap out of me. Well, I, I, what about Trump? Oh, well. He, you know something? I would rather see Trump be president than Pence. Okay? This is the kind of thing being said that makes it very hard for me to go on. Trump has just consigned a whole people to death. Oh, no, no. Look, you're not, I, I, don't take, get me wrong. I think Trump's terrible. I think Trump should, should not be president of the United States. I think but was, you said you would take him over anybody. No, over no, Pence. no. I said I, I would. No, no. Else. I said I would take him over Pence. Yes, because I just Pence said that. is a religious zealot who would shut down more stuff that you really would really drive you crazy. You know, Trump is doing this out of his own stupidity. Pence was will do it out of his own we religious fervor. Too, I mean, he believes Pence believes that you can you know transform gays from. Gay to straight by religion. Yes, yes, as we all know, but you know, you don't get to do things like that. That Supreme Court would have to decide something like that, not yeah. Pence. Well, we we said, how much can Trump ruin this country? You know, it's who a, said that? I well, I have often felt that this democracy kind of had an insulation against this sort of thing, but apparently, I was wrong. You know, that, that Trump is doing a lot to destroy this country. You're not just discovering that now, I hope. No, no, I'm not discovering okay. it now. This is what um, it was like when we were married, folks. Anyway, <laughs> you get a brief idea. Well, you were saying some pretty outrageous things that you think old people are all the same from what you were no, saying. No, I didn't say they were all the at same. At the same age, and that's so far from true that it's 180 degrees well, out. When I talk about old people, I'm talking about, I'm ta talking from experience. I'm old. I'm older than you are, so I have more experience but than you But you're not the only old person. I know I'm not the only old person, but I know what I think I would be capable of at this point in my life. But that's life. you. I'm just saying that I don't want to take a chance on somebody else my age, okay? That's all I'm saying. You know, I mean, I, I think uh, Elizabeth Warren is, what, 70, and I, I don't have any question about her. But my question is, there are two questions. Number one, uh, and uh, I guess we're going to... Apparently, though, wait, before you get to the next point, apparently then you don't believe what I have said, which is not me, which is mm -hmm. many researchers saying this, that old people age at dramatically different rates. No, I agree with you that they do age at radically different rates. But I think when you're talking about 78, 79, up around in there, you're starting to talk about the, the, the edge of uh, being able to say, okay, this person may be a spry 79, you know? I, don't, I, I, I just don't believe there's such a thing spry as a spry. Is, by there the are way, some people who are 79. There are people. some people who are 79 who are four years younger than that emotionally and every other way physically and so on 
On the other hand, there are people who are my age who are 84, technically, you know? So, I, you know, I agree with you. There's a difference, but do you want to take that chance? Yes. I, if I, if do, I think the person, you know, in all my other evaluations would be a good precedent, yes, of course I would. Well, why don't we do this as a qualification? Uh, why don't we ask everybody running for president, what time do you go to bed now? Why? <laughs> because older people go to bed earlier. Yes, they need more sleep. Yeah, well, if they need, but the president doesn't get to sleep a lot. Do you know that? We've been led to believe that. But you don't know that. I mean, in Trump's case, all he does all day is watch television. You know. But that doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. You know, uh, but my other question is, and that would be as regards Biden, do you think that Trump in his own weird, stupid way uh, has made uh, Biden less of a candidate? I don't know that we can tell yet. Because I think a lot of people believe Biden has not responded to Trump aggressively. Oh, because they wanted, you know, who? Some writers say that. People no, I think that. people uh, people feel people don't say that. No, writers people, and pundits. This is an audition for president of the United uh, for running against Donald Trump, and if you can't be aggressive now, what's going to happen when you're running? Do you think that the aggression and loud and punching in the face verbally is the only way to deal with? No, Trump? I think they just wanted a little more aggressive answer than than Biden gave. That it was just a little too soft. So you have an idea of how a presidential candidate should mm. behave, and if they vary from that, then they're not No, I, 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 after Trump, I'm not going to define what a presidential candidate should be like. I mean, the president, Trump, I, I described... But you have with Biden. I, well, I described, I described, I described, the, I described the Trump campaign as being a remake of the producers. Okay, let, let's see everything we can do wrong... So we don't get elected, and then we'll walk away with the money. The fact was, he I think he won, and they all looked at each other like they did in the producers. They say, where do we go right? Could we go back to where we were that yeah. you didn't answer? What? Is that so you're saying that you've got this little area where it's a proper way to respond to that kind of an attack, and if you're one side or the other, then he's not qualified to be president. It's a question of aggressiveness in a campaign. And it is... No, Why it, do you oh, think no, you no. need to be aggressive because in the it's, same uh, way that Trump is aggressive? Because it, it, We're not saying being uh, aggressive. Well, they're they're complaining he just didn't give a good response. That he didn't give a, a hard enough response to say, no, you know, absolutely not. Whatever he had to what do. What would you say in his place? You know, the, you know, you follow politics. You know enough to come up with... I, I'd say you I've had an, I'd, say, I'd say I've had enough of this crap. I quit, but that's me. Um, well, that isn't what I asked again. I, I think I would take a more. I would just more aggressively answer the question. You know. But give me what you think you should have done in the manner you think you should have done it. You should say none of none of what Donald Trump is asserting in any way, shape, or form is true. Instead, he's that sounds he's pretty weak to me. No. Oh, well. <laughs> And that's why I'm not running for president. Oh, I thought you were going to say, and that's why I'm not married to her anymore. <laughs> that was answer number two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you, I, I got to tell you a quick story. We're running over time, but I got to tell you a quick story. Um, you knew my father, you know. Yes, and you knew wonderful how, man. You knew how much I loved him. But, you know, after he died, I kind of went into a state of denial and didn't, you know, didn't think much about him after he died. And uh, I think you said I cried in my sleep the night that he died. But uh, um, so the other day, and there, and there are times when you will miss that person. We were next door. It's actually in the other building. This guy, these people invited us up to their apartment. And all over the apartment are violins. Uh, he, his, he uses that as an office for, there's one in London and he's the New York office. They restore, refurbish, and sell violins. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, it's wonderful. My father was a violinist. He said, then I think you can appreciate this. And he takes me into another room. He's got a lock on the door. He opens up the door. He then goes to a safe. He opens up the safe. He pulls out two violin cases, opens them up, and in one there's one violin, and in the other one there are two violins. And he said, you know what you're looking at? I said, what? He said, three Stradivariuses. Which, of course, in case people don't know, is maybe the finest violin ever made. One was made in 1680, the other one in, 19, in 1720. I don't know how old the third one was. Total value of the three violins that I was sitting there looking at was $12 million. And I, I and then, then he had me take I'm, one of the, he had me take one of the Stradivariuses and I put it under my chin and up to my you know, and I, at that precise moment when I got to call my father. Oh, oh my goodness, yeah. Because my father would have died to hear this story. Yeah, you know, yeah, he yeah. would have just loved it. So all yeah. of a sudden, after forty years or whatever, I miss my father. You know, yeah. he was a great guy. He yeah, really was. He really was. Yeah. And he liked you too. He thought you were terrific. Yeah, I liked him pretty much too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he was a, I, 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 he was a great person and I've never been able to achieve that greatness, you know, and uh, for that I'm eternally sad because uh, he was a, just, just a great man. He would have been proud of you if he was still here. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he would have said, why the fuck did you and that woman get divorced? You know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ronnie Bennett. Uh, she has timegoesby.net if you want to read her blog, which you should do. If you don't, shame on you. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, right? All right. Take okay. care. Bye.